Management. Uh, I am going to present the uh, presentation on the urological investigation. Uh, landing objective of today's presentation is cystogram, erythrogram, anti-grade and retrograde pilogram, and transrectal ultrasound. Introduction. Primary function of the fluoroscope is to provide the real-time dynamic view of anatomical structure. Fluoroscope examination is useful for the preoperative diagnosis, postoperative evolution in the variety of the urological condition. It uses the X-rays when addition, with addition to the contrast media to highlight the anatomy. It includes the intravenous uh, urography, anti-grade and retrograde pilogram, cystogram, and anti-grade and retrograde urethrogram. Prerequisites for the contrast study in this detailed history and examination should be done before the procedure. Written info and consent should be taken from the patient. History of any medication, especially blood, blood thinner should be documented as it should be stopped before the invasive procedure as a retrograde pyrography. History of the allergic reaction to the contrast should be noted. Urinary culture should be negative as the positive culture can increase the risk of sepsis. LMP should be asked from the child-bearing woman to roll out the pregnancy as the radiation exposure can be the teratogenic. In, in this slide, uh, contrast allergy is very much important. If the patient has contrast allergy, then you have to change. You, you should not proceed for that procedure. Okay? A six to eight hour NPO should be considered for the retrograde pyelogram, as it is mostly performed under the GA. Cystogram is an imaging test that can help to diagnose the problem in the bladder. It uses the X ray. Image can be taken on the X ray films or the fluoroscopic images. It has the two parts static cystography and the voiding cystoerythrogram or the maturating cystoerythrogram. Static cystography is employed primarily to evaluate the structural integrity of the bladder, shape, and contour of the bladder, filling defects such as the tumor and the stones. In this patient is positioned to the supine, plane radiograph is taken to evaluate for the stones and to confirm the position and the technique. Bladder is filled with the 200 to 400 cc of the contrast, diluted contrast. Adequate filling is important to demonstrate the intravesical pathology or bladder rupture. Indication for the static cystography is the intravesical pathology, bladder diverticuli, colovesical or vesicovaginal fistula, bladder or the anastomotic integrity after the surgical procedure, blood or the penetrating trauma to the bladder. Oblique film should be obtained to see the posterior diverticuli or the fistula. Post drainage film completes the study. Limitation of the cysto uh, static cystography is that abdominal and the pelvic CT are so commonly used in the evaluation of the blood and the penetrating trauma to the abdomen. However, studies show that the conventional static cystography is as sensitive as the CT cystography in the detecting the bladder rupture. But we mostly perform the CT scan for the trauma. This is the normal um, cystoerythrogram. Basically, we have to see from the um, either we uh, start integrating from the bladder to the meatus or we should go from the meatus to the uh, bladder. And we have to uh, look for the, the whole length of the urethra and the bladder and verum antenna. And in the pediatric population, we have to look for the posterior urethra wall or any reflex. Okay, the area of between the urethra and the bladder is this is the penile urethra, okay, and this is most likely the bulbar urethra, and uh, this is the bulbo membranous junction, and this is the uh, small uh, membranous urethra which is uh, around one centimeter size, and after that this is the prostatic. Now the pathological histogram is there. The cystogram showing the multiple, uh, multiple diverticuli, it is basically occur in the uh, high pressure bladders. And the Christmas tree appearances look like that in the cystogram and it is uh, mostly due to the neurogenic bladder which also is the high, high pressure bladder causing the uh, diverticulum in the region. The connection between the bladder and the vagina is shown on the contrast study of the cystogram which is the fistula strength and diagnosis of the fistula, the vesicovaginal fistula. Of the patient and the patient is underwent the surgical um, post surgical anatomical leak. He had he went to the robotic prostatectomy. After that, the contrast cystography is performed, which shows the contrast extravasation. And the patient with the history of the abdominal trauma, when the cystography is done, it shows the extra peritoneal extravasation of the contrast, showing the bladder rupture. Voiding cystoerythrogram. It is performed to evaluate the anatomy and the physiology of the bladder and the urethra. It provides the valuable information regarding the posterior urethra in the pediatric population. 
It also used to demonstrate the vesicle urethral reflex, structure on the function of bladder after obstruction, evolution of the urethra in the males and females. Patient is positioned in the supine or in the semi upright position. Plain radiograph is obtained. 5 to 8 FR tube is used in the children to fill the appropriate bladder volume. In the adult, 200 to 400 uh, cc bladder is filled depending upon the capacity of the bladder. Catheter is removed and film is obtained. AP and uh, anterior obstetrian oblique films are obtained. Bladder neck and urethra is evaluated by the fluoroscopy during the volume. Bilateral oblique views may demonstrate the low grade reflex, bladder or urethral diabetic there which are not always not visible in the straight anterior posterior films. Limitation for the voiding cystic urethrogram is that catheter uses may be traumatic in the children and difficult in patients with anatomic abnormalities. Filling of the bladder may, uh, may stimulate the bladder spasm and the bladder filling in the patient with a spinal cord injury higher than the T6 may precipitate the anatomical dysreflex which causing the brace PP and This is the normal, again the normal micturating cystogram showing the bladder and the from bladder neck and from here to the urethra. Again, the full bladder fling phase, uh, left anterior oblique view and the right anterior oblique view of the bladder. And this is showing the voiding phase with the narrowing over the nail urethra. Okay, again, this is the cystogram of the child which, which present with the bladder outlet obstruction. And here it is shown that the dilated posterior urethra and the impression of the posterior urethral wall is made and the upper trach is uh, dilated because of that obstructed um, urethra. This is again the urethral uh, maturating sister urethrogram is showing the dilated posterior urethral wall, slightly trabeculated bladder and the reflex in the kidney that the dilated urethra. And this is the showing that the patient has the urethral diverticulum as the patient is filled with the contrast and when, um, when voided, there is a residual contrast in the urethral diverticulum, which is can be caused there, which can cause the recurrent UTI in the patient. And the most important when we using in the sister urethrogram in the pediatric population and the adult population, it is the vesico urethral reflex, which can be mentioned by the grading on the sister urethrogram. As the grade is mentioned, they have a uh, non-dilated ureter, and the grade two is in pelvis and chalicin without the dilatation. Grade 3 is uh, mild to moderate dilatation of the ureter, renal pelvis and chalicin with the minimal blunting. Grade 4 is a moderate ureter uh, tortious and dilatation of the pelvis and the chalicis. And the grade 5 is gross dilatation of the ureter, pelvis and the uh, chalicis. This is again the cystogram in the bladder is filled and this is the unilateral grade 5 reflex is noted. And here the grade 5, bi bilateral grade 5 reflex is located, noted up to the kidney. And this is the voiding picture of the urethra. Urethrogram. Urethra can be imagined radiographically by the retrograde injection of the radiopaque fluid in the integrate fashion with the voiding cystic urethrography. Retrograde urethrography is preferred modality for the evolution of the male urethral injuries. The integrate is required when the lien is in the posterior urethra, such as the posterior urethral bone. The retrograde technique is more useful for the examining the anterior penile urethra. As it is uh, less reliable for the posterior and retrograde is the major race reliable for the posterior urethra. Indication for the urethrography is the urethral structure disease, urethral the penile trauma or the pelvic trauma, traumatic gross in area, diverticular, fistula, and the post urethra is plasty to uh, document the, the integrity of the uh, urethra, how it is dilated or pendant. It is a beneficial for detecting the total length of the urethral structure, which could not be negotiated by the cystoscopy. If there is a structure in the anterior, uh, anterior urethra and when doing the cystoscopy. Retrograde urethrography also demonstrates the anatomy distal to the structure. A plain film is obtained before the contrast injection. Patient positions slightly oblique to allow the evolution of the full length of urethra. A small catheter is placed in the, into the fossa navicularis. Balloon is filled up to the 2, two cc and the contrast is injected and images are the technique. This is the normal urethral anatomy starting from the Person avicularis, penile urethra, going up to the bulbar urethra and the membranous urethra. This is the prostatic urethra, and after that, the bladder is there. And this is on the contrast study. The same, the penile membranous and prostatic. Now, the pathological urethrogram is there. This mystery of the trauma, and this is showing the contrast ex uh, extravasation, which is likely presenting the urethral disruption. 
most um, distal proximal to the nail urethra. This is again showing the pain urethral structure with the narrowing of the urethra. And here it is showing the urethral diverticulum with the contrast into the diverticulum. Urethrorectal fistula. And again, the history of the uh, trauma, and there is a complete tear between the two portions of the urethra into the bulbomembrane, bulbar uh, area. Sonorurethrography, it is a simple and a safe technique, provides a comparable efficacy to the retrograde urethrography, accurately stimulate, uh, estimates the structure length, diameter, and the periurethral fibrosis. 7.5 mHz frequency transducer probe is used. Probe is applied directly over the ventral surface of the pinnas, scrotum, and the perineum. Images of the urethra is obtained sequentially from the pendulous urethra proximally towards the deep bulbar area. Length of the structure, intra and diameter, and the wall thickness are determined accurately. Posterior urethra cannot be assessed reliably in the sonorurethrography. The advantages of sonorurethrography over the um, retrograde urethrograph is that the patient is not exposed to the radiation, and particularly it is helpful in the patient who are the, has a history of allergic reaction to the contrast. This is the normal sonorurethrography and the normal retrograde urethrograph. This is the showing the urethra. And here it is showing the penile bulbar structure on the maturating uh, on the retrograde urethra and over the sonography. And there is a bulbar urethral structure, the comparison of the ultrasound. Penile structure again showing over the ultrasound and the balanitin zero zero tica obliterance with the inflammatory condition of the ureter. In this, we cannot uh, comparatively uh, estimate the whole length of the urethra due to the inflammatory tissue around in, surrounding the urethra. Solar urethrography usually uh, depicts the complexity and the spongiofibrosis also. We cannot evaluate the uh, spongiofibrosis on the retrograde urethrogram. So, if you want to do the, uh, uh, you want to know the. Uh, complexity and spongiofibrosis then you have to do the sonorurethrography in the penile and bulbar urethra only. You say it is not reliable in the posterior urethra. Retro no, no, it's still, it, it, still it is ongoing. Uh, it is not completed. When completed, then we then discuss. Uh, no, uh, it, it is done by uh, Amit Deswani. Now coming to the pilogram. Uh, retrograde pilography of the urogram is a minimally invasive procedure. It requires the cystoscopy and the placement of, the placement of the urethral catheters to inject in the dam. A radiopic contrast medium is introduced into the ureter. Radiograph is abdomen is taken before the contrast was to locate the position after in inserting the urethral catheter. Uh, ionic and the non-ionic contrast can be used. Ionic is preferred due to its low cost. Ion ionic contrast is a high or smaller contrast media. Example of that is the urography. And the non-ionic low, low or smaller contrast media is the ultravest. Contrast media should not be too dense as it will obscure the small layer. It should be diluted in the serine fluid. It is usually performed in the dorsal ethnogram position. Plain abdominal radiograph is taken to ensure the correct positioning and to see the any bladder or the kidney stone or any lien to the bladder or the kidneys. Cystoscopy is performed, catheter is passed in the ureter through which the contrast is injected. Care should be taken to evacuate the air bubbles as it could be mistaken for the stones or the tumor. Limited use of the fluoroscopy while injecting the uh, while injecting the contrast helps the prevents over distension of the collecting system. Indication of the pilogram, retrograde pilogram is to evaluate the congenital or the wide urethral obstruction, obfuscation or the distension of the collecting system to facilitate the pituitaneous assist. In conjugation with the urethroscopy or the stent placement, evolution of the hematuria, surveillance of the transitional cell carcinoma, and the evolution of the traumatic or the atrogenic injury to the ureter. Contraindication for the retro, uh, pilo, uh, retrograde pilogram. It is not the absolute contraindication, but the urinary tract infection should be treated before the procedure or it should be done under the antibiotic cover. Patient who cannot be cystoscopy due to the history of the recent bladder or the urethral surgery. 
Limitation for the retrograde pilogram is that difficult identification of the orifice in the cases of the inflammatory or the neoplastic bladder changes. Changes associated with the bladder outlet obstruction causes the ingulation of the intramural part of the ureter, which may result in the trauma during the cannulation of the orifice. Complication of the this study is that the uh, backfill of the contrast, which may be cause upper introduction of the infection and the absorption of the contrast. This is the normal anatomy of the renal system on the contrast study, showing the major calyces, renal pelvis, the ureter, course of the ureter, and the contrast plane in the bladder. This is not taken from the retrograde images, but the anatomy will be shown like this. And the patient in which we start from by inserting the urethral catheter and the position is checked on the fluoroscope. Dye is introducing, we are showing the fling defect in the lower calyx. Again, the fling defect is prominent and the dye is excreting from the pelvis into the urethral. This is again showing the urethral catheter insertion, insertion of the contrast medium and the, after the 5 to 10 minutes, the image is taken and it is also showing the normal bilateral uterus, the normal bilateral renal system. This retrogram is showing the urethral diverticuli over there. This is the complete duplex system showing on the retrograde pilogram with the separate both having the separate ureters. Again, the retrogram, retrograde pilogram showing the filling defect in the lower calyx, likely due to the stone. Partial duplex system with the filling defect in the upper moiety, and here is the filling defect in the ureter, likely due to the stone or And this is the retrocaval ureter, which is in showing, which is in finding of the retrograde pil uh, pilogram. It is a basically congenital abnormality associated, mostly most commonly associated with the Turner syndrome, in which there is a dilated ureter and it is not having the uh, ureter having a norm, not having a normal course of the its warfare. Basically, it is behind the ventricular We did ureter. Uh, Trochiscuro ureter showing the multiple beaded and structure dilated ureter. It is basically occur in the genito urinary TB where due to the recurrent inflammation, structures are found in the ure uh, ureters. And because of this, the upper trach is dilated. Again, the ureteral structure showing a narrowing of the ureter. Pipistrum ureter is also the rigid tube like ureter which is also occur in the genital urinary TB. And the retroperitoneal fibrosis. In this, the mid middle third of the ureter is uh, deviated towards the medial, uh, medial side, deviated towards the medial side. Antigrade pilogram. Antigrade pilogram or the percutaneous urogram is usually done when the excretory or retrograde ure urography has failed or it is contraindicated. When or when there is already nephrostomy tube is placed. For the integrated study, contrast medium is introduced by the nephrostomy tube or by direct injecting into the renal collecting system where the percutaneous is punctured through the patient's brain. Images are taken on the extra films or the fluoroscopic images. This is the integrated study which is showing the bilateral uretic structures as there is a no contrast in the bladder and the dilated upper system, the tortuous ureter. Again, this is the integrated pilogram showing the mid ureteric structure as no control is filling in the bladder. And here is a percutaneous pilogram. It is showing the hydronephrotic grossly dilated kidneys. Transrectal ultrasound sonography. It is a sonographic imaging procedure that is used for the many prostatic intervention, so including the prostatic bi biopsy, uh, cryotherapy, brachytherapy, and during the investigation of the male factor infer infertility and the hemispermia. It is a minimally invasive and provides the anatomical detail of the prostate and the periprostatic tissue. It gives the real-time information for the rapid and accurate, di accurate diagnosis. A high-frequency 7.5 to the 10 MHz transducer is usually used. As the scanning frequencies increase, the resolution is increased, but the depth of the imaging is less. This can be the biplane or the single plane transducer. Probe have the scanning angle of almost 180 degree, which allows the visualization of the entire plane in the transfers in the sagittal sections. 
Patient should be positioned for the left lateral with the hip and knee flex to the 90 degree and the buttocks at the edge of the couch. It is essential to perform a DRE before inserting the ultrasound probe. After the probe is inserted, insertion, a survey scan is performed from base to the apex of the prostate including seminal vesicle. Complete evolution should occur in the both transverse and sagittal section to assess for which are the hypercate area within the periphery of the prostate. The prostatic volume can be calculated by the using the formula transfer diameter into the AP diameter into the longitudinal diameter into the pi divided by the 6. So three diameters should be taken on the transverse uh, ultrasound. Seminal vesicle are then examined in the transverse plane for the evolution of the ecogenicity, height of the seminal vesicle, and the diameter of the vest difference. Mid sagittal transfer and the longitudinal images are taken. Anterior posterior height and the length and the height and length measurements are taken. Rectal wall thickness must be evaluated and is recommended. Pain or the tenderness, rectal structure, mass, plane, or the bleeding encountered during the DRA or when is inserted may preclude the transrectal ultrasound. Rectal cancer, prolapse, or the inflammatory process, or any other rectal abnormalities require the further evolution of the patient. This is the diagram that the patient should be positioned to the left letter with the hip is flexed and the probe is inserted correctly and the volume of the uh, prostate is taken. And this is with the biopsy data if we have to take the biopsy of the prostate. Indication for the transrectal ultrasound is measurement of the prostate volume. Abnormal DRE, DRE, prostatic biopsy, evolution of the prostatic cyst or the seminal vesicle cyst, evolution and expiration of the prostatic abscess, lower, recurrent lower urinary tract symptom, pelvic pain, prostatitis, hematospermia, and then fertility. This is the normal curse ultrasound which is showing the prostatic area over here. This one is. And the zones are divided on the transfer, and this is the plane showing the prostatic area with the transitional zone and the, this the urethra and the peripheral zone. This is showing the prostatic abscess on the transrectal ultrasound. Prostatic calcification. And here it is the prostatic mass. The left seminal vesicle. This is the whole prostate. Again, this is showing the prostatic mass over the transrectal ultrasound, and the capsule of the prostate is. The seminal vesicles are appear over the transrectal ultrasound <coughs> like this, and this is the <coughs> normal ejaculatory drugs with the seminal vesicle. Prostatic cyst over the transrectal ultrasound, clear cyst, no location in this inside it can be aspirated. Procedure application for the transrectal ultrasound is transrectal guided biopsy of the prostate to evaluate the rise in the PSA or the abnormal DRE. High grade prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia and the atypical small SNR proliferation or the initial biopsy is indicated for the immediate or the plain repeat by transrectal ultrasound biopsy. Press biopsy may be performed for the rising PSA after the initial treatment. After the radical prostatectomy, ultrasound and biopsy of the prostatic fossa and the vesicle anastomosis may be used to diagnose the local recurrence and the prostatic cyst aspiration. Patient preparation should be informed regarding the procedure, risk, benefits, and the complication. Informed consent should be taken before the procedure. Antibiotic prophylaxis is routinely given. Patient is positioned same as for the transrectal ultrasound. Periprostatic local anesthesia is given prior to the biopsy. 18 gauge needle core biopsy. Uh, then is advised to use. Complication of the trust guided biopsy could be the hematospermia, hematuria, protracted bleeding, infection, and the urinary tract, which can be treated upon. It's a biopsy in a probe, and uh, it has got a, uh, a transducer which is on the tip of the probe, and it has got a transducer which is on the long axis. So uh, you can uh, interchange between the two. Uh, for instance, if you want to use only one uh, transducer, you can have it. So one is at the very end, which is like, um, for instance, it can see the bladder if you put it into the into the rectum, and the thing which is on the long axis of the probe, that, that is uh, longitudinally, that can have the longer length of the prostate which is very close to the anterior wall of the rectum. So if you put it in the rectum, you can have both the things simultaneously, or you can have only one. You have got an option on the machine. 
And uh, um, the thing is, it has to be learned by all of us uh, who are urologists, practicing urologists, because the way forward is to do a prostatic biopsy and uh, other diagnostic um, evaluations by our own selves. And that is the way the world is going, uh, which means that if you want to have a biopsy of uh, anything in the bladder, that is the bladder growth, you do it yourself. If you have got a biopsy, if you want to have a biopsy from the kidney, it has to be done by either nephrologist or urologist. Uh, if you want to do a biopsy of the prostate, it has to be done by a, a urologist. Uh, radiologists are there to guide us, they are there to help us. But the interpretation has to be with the consultation of, I think, both the both the members of the team, that is, urologists and radiologists. You cannot just rely upon the statement of radiologists. You can always have a good amount of uh, uh, weightage of what they are saying, but since you are the one who uh, who, who, ha who has to take the decision, and that has got a wider implication, and you must know how to read all these things, so for instance, scan, MRI, uh, doing biopsy by, by your own Hands. So it's the perception. For instance, uh, I remember one case uh, that happens to be a female who has been through uh, hysterectomy and there was a regrowth in the pelvis. So I asked my colleague from radiologist to just do a transrectal ultrasound because you don't have the probe which is transvaginal. So what you do is you take biopsy from the growth. So he says that trust in a female, and you know. It's not trust in the female. It is basically a probe in the female rectum taking biopsy from the pelvis. So you see, this is just a tool. The way it has it has to be done is the way you think, and you can always ask your colleague to to uh, help you out. Thank you.